There are many unique ancient megastructures that can be found all over the world, with Japan being no exception. However, interestingly, some of these extremely ancient earthworks cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Known as a Kufan, these unique yet highly recognizable shaped earthworks, translated as meaning ancient mound tomb or ancient grave in Japanese, we feel could quite possibly also be found upon Mars. Not only could, but may have already been located and identified. Of course, without actually visiting the planet, we cannot confirm this beyond doubt. Yet the similarities between these two locations is unquestionably compelling. The best-known Kofun within Japan is known as the Dyson Kofun, approximately 500 meters long and 300 meters across at its widest point. It is an enormous ancient structure, with the entire tomb perimeter measuring in at 840 meters long. Enclosed by three moats, the mound rises approximately 35 meters above the surrounding terrain. The inner moat is the widest at approximately 60 meters, with the entire mound being approximately 100,000 square meters in area, and the entire tomb some 460,000 square meters. Today, the tomb is off-limits, protected by the Imperial Household Agency in the center of Sakai City. The moats are maintained and provide a sanctuary for fish and water birds. Although, conveniently, the mound itself has been left completely overgrown by vegetation, this regardless of the risk of deterioration by the roots of trees along with the additional point of them being tourist attractions. One has to wonder whether this deliberate choice to leave them completely obscured by trees is actually an attempt to conceal their shape from the rest of the world. Why leave such clearly important ancient structures engulfed in trees, with root systems left to flourish that are notorious for destroying ancient structures? Why make such a decision if they were not indeed attempting to conceal these enigmatic earthworks. We strongly suspect, although with only circumstantial evidence of course, that a lost civilization, possibly a mother civilization of Earth, will one day be confirmed upon Mars. It continues to be a puzzling question as to why some of the most ancient ruins on Earth are also seemingly the most advanced. Is this fact suggestive of intercontinental travel? Possibly our highly advanced ancient ancestors having built such awe-inspiring structures upon their arrival to our planet after traveling here from Mars? Could there possibly be ancient Kofuns, and indeed other ancient structures and tombs, still left upon the Red Planet, waiting to be rediscovered? waiting to inform our modern civilization of another chunk of human history. Why are these enigmatic, iconic ancient Kofuns only found within Japan? Why does this anomaly on Mars look exactly like one? Why do the Japanese continue to conceal the Kofuns' true shape beneath dense tree lines? We find all of these suspicious factors highly compelling. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement, a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception. For it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another, regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. 
However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston, former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies, and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet, fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? Or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The Red Planet Although many people assume it to be the closest planet to our own, it is in fact Venus which comes closer to the Earth during its orbit around our star. Mercury is the closest planet not only to Earth, but to every other planet in the solar system at one time or another. Yet these giants barren landscapes incapable of supporting life. This reality is partly why Mars is so often the focus of man's attention in regard to our solar system's planetary bodies. With a partial atmosphere, and thanks to the Mars rovers, proven to possess water, it is a far less violent planet, not scorched like Mercury, or filled with toxins like Venus. As such, for many years now, as the human population has exploded and modern technology has made self-sustaining, isolated life-supporting systems a reality, the search for suitable places for future colonization of the solar system has become a more and more popular subject of study. One of the most important additional factors for possible candidates for this exploration of space is the planet's distance from the Sun, nicknamed the Goldilocks Zone. Just like porridge being just right, Mars is located within a specific distance from the Sun capable of sustaining life. And although space agencies and other fields of funded institutions staunchly deny the possibility of it once having been inhabited, possibly even by man himself, dismissing such ideas as preposterous, Mars's desolate red oxide landscape is in fact uncannily similar to Earth's possible future appearance if humans were to continue unsustainable activities or a cataclysmic event were to occur. Thus. Is it so preposterous to ponder the possibility that the planet we see before us today was in fact transformed into its lifeless form by an event or possibly past insatiable appetites for its resources by an ancient civilization which once called it home? Could the Cambrian explosion, the sudden appearance of advanced life on our planet, be evidence of terraforming? Could there have also been a similar, yet now hidden, mammalian explosion, indicating our own sudden arrival here on Earth after it artificially became capable of sustaining us? An orchestrated introduction of a complex food chain by ancient man, who were in reality Martians. We have in the past covered some very strange occurrences on Mars. 
one in particular, suggesting that possible black operations to colonize the Red Planet are already underway. The Mars rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days. This estimation was based upon the notorious dust storms which choke its surface. Yet Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, and Opportunity only recently ceased operation. This remarkable longevity, solely a result of what has become known as cleaning events, which for 14 years were repeatedly experienced and documented. Yet what is most curious regarding these events is that they always occurred while the rovers were offline. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms block sunlight to the rovers and threaten the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted and the rovers came back online, something had cleaned them of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events. Did our mysterious helper assume it had died? Join us in our next video, which will be an expose of artifacts, features, ancient testimonies and satellite anomalies, and many other factors which support the conspiracy of secret Martian inhabitation, supporting the hypothesis of an ancient Martian civilization that once called our red neighbor home. Evidential arguments we find highly compelling.